broken access control. This is the number one web app vulnerability according to the OWASP Foundation. But what the heck is it? How can we prevent it? And how did it lead to one of the largest data breaches in history? Well, we're gonna cover all of that in this video. Let's start with the obvious. What is broken access control? Well, it's pretty simple in essence. It's when a user is able to access privileged data that they're not supposed to. Now they can do this either by trying to access data that they shouldn't be allowed, accessing data of a different user, either intentionally or unintentionally, or being able to elevate their privileges. For example, being able to move from a read-only user to an admin user. All of these are examples of broken access control. Let's start with one of the most common examples that we see out there. It's direct object references without proper validation. Uh, it kind of sounds technical, but it's, it's really not. Essentially, this is when you have an object, like a user ID that is referenced in a URL, for example. Now, let's say that the user ID is 224. Now, what happens if you change this in the URL bar to 225? If you get another user's information, then this is an example of broken access control. Now, in this case, you may be actually validated into the system. You have gone through a login process and you have a valid token, but the data isn't separated or sanitized correctly. Therefore, you can see another user's data that you shouldn't have because you've been able to manipulate the reference ID. Another very common example is missing or misconfigured access control on endpoints, like your API endpoints. An example of this is if I started making post requests to an unprotected endpoint, requesting to change my role, for example, from user to admin. This would be an example of broken access because there are no checks and balances that stop me from doing that. But what about in real life? When has broken access control really granted an attacker access to a huge amount of information? And we're fortunate, well, I guess somewhat fortunate, that we can actually refer to one of the largest data breaches in history. And we can go to Optus, a company in Australia for this. Now Optus is a telecom provider, the second largest telecom provider in Australia. And in 2022, they had a data breach that exposed 10 million records, or roughly a third of the population of Australia was affected by this. So what really happened here? Well, a couple of things accumulated, and this breach really is a good example of two of the areas that we talked about. Missing or misconfigured access to endpoints, and also direct object referencings without proper validation. So let's dive into exactly what happened in this case. Well, an attacker found that there was an API endpoint that gave them customer information. Now, the idea is that you're meant to be logged in as a customer, it calls out to this endpoint and it gives you back information. Now, the first issue is that this endpoint wasn't officially secured. It didn't actually have any access control around it. Anyone could make a call to this API endpoint. This is the first failing. However, in security, we work on redundancy. And because we should have had secure ID referencing, this shouldn't have been too much of an issue. What I mean by that is usually when we create a user ID, we create it as a very unique number or a high entropy string, something that is very random. It means it's very difficult or nearly impossible to guess the next person's ID. And this is where Optus had their second failing, which was the direct object referencing. And what that means is that they had sequential IDs. So you think about this as someone has ID number one, well, guess what the second ID is going to be. And these two combined pretty much allowed the attacker to enumerate through all the options and get all of the data from this unsecured endpoint because they simply were able to go up one iteration in the ID sequence. So two failures of broken access control that resulted in the breach of sensitive information being exposed of a third of the population of Australia. So how do we actually stop broken access control for our applications? Well, there's lots of great references and resources out there on the internet. My first place to go would be the OWASP top 10 itself. There'll be a link for that down below. But here are some of my thoughts of what you should implement to be able to prevent this. Number one, I would consider making sure that you build your application with a deny by default methodology for your data and objects. What this means is that access to your databases should be an exception, not the rule, and any kind of data for that matter. If you build on this, then you shouldn't come into troubles later on where you've accidentally granted access to some sensitive data that shouldn't be.
Another way is to make sure you implement rate limiting on things like your endpoints, particularly your API endpoints. This means that if someone's trying to brute force their way into your application, hopefully this rate limit will kick in and they'll prevent them from being able to successfully do that. Another area is to be to invest heavily in your identification and access control at the start of your application, then use those mechanics throughout the rest of your web app. This does mean you're going to invest more heavily up front in this access control, but it does mean that you'll save time in the long run because you're not going to have to rip it out and replace it as you go, which I'm sure we've all had to do in the past. Now, if you're looking for some great tools to be able to help you kind of deal with broken access control, there are a couple that I would recommend. First off is DAST, stands for Dynamic Application Security Testing. Now the DAST standard is something called ZAP, it's an open source tool, and you can think of it as like a little hacker that's gonna attack your application out of a box, right? And give you a report or anything that it finds. Now DAST can be really powerful, especially when it's in, used in conjunction with something like a SAS tool, which stands for Static Application Security Testing, which doesn't look at your app, instead it looks at your code. It won't be able to find all of your vulnerabilities, but it will work well, especially in conjunction with DAST. Now, if you're looking for something with a little bit more power to help you prevent these attacks, maybe you should look at something like an in-app firewall. Something like Zen by Akita, which again, also is an open source tool, can actually block attacks whilst they're coming in. And this is going to help you perform tasks like rate limiting your APIs. In fact, if you're looking for an all-in-one package, you might want to consider looking at the Aikido product suites because they have a pretty much click button start for all of the tools that we talked about now. Again, there'll be a link down below. Well, I hope you found this video useful and you got something out of it. Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a series on all of the OWASP top 10. So please subscribe to the channel if you want to find out more. Until next time, have a great day.